no CO2 coming out of the tailpipe as it's operating. There is no tailpipe, but it's it's emissions free in that regard. But you've got to go back to you know, what are the, what are the emissions associated with the fuel that Con Edison is burning to generate the electricity that I use to charge this up every night. And if you want to do a complete fuel cycle analysis, you need to look at you know what are the emissions associated with manufacturing this vehicle and the lithium batteries. It's like a, a nuclear plant actually produces zero emissions as it operates, but you've got to look at the emissions that are generated as you mine and process the uranium. It acts like a golf cart insofar as when you let, take your foot off the gas, it immediately slows down. You, you find you don't have to use the, use the brake as much. You just end up letting up off, off the gas. It doesn't really coast. It, the, the regenerative aspect kicks in and it's recharging the battery as you're slowing down. What's What's right in front of the driver instead of a speedometer is this gauge from zero to 100%, which shows the, uh, the amount of the charge. When I started out this morning, it was fully charged over the weekend, so it's all the way over to 100%. This vehicle has a range of 100 to 120 miles, and um, unlike a, a hybrid vehicle or a gas-powered vehicle, when the vehicle runs out of charge and you're away from your charging station, you're stranded. You pretty much got to call a, a tow truck. So it's, it's, it's an issue with uh, the consumers are going to have to get used to with electric vehicles is, is this um, range anxiety. When you hit the gas and, and you want to take off, if you're in the, in the open road and you've got some space to, to fly, um, if you punch the accelerator, it, it literally, the car just sort of grabs onto the pavement and, and flies. I mean, what I've described it to friends, it's like a, a rocket-charged go-kart. One of the issues that we're going to be studying is the need to have time of day rates and the need to encourage these cars to be charged up in the middle of the night rather than at peak times of the day. That if we're really going to have widespread deployment of electric vehicles, it could cause huge additional electric load on the nation's grid. And you don't want that load to happen at 4 to 6 p.m. on a hot uh, summer afternoon when the loads are already high.